chapters 3 and 4. In this chapter, we will see miracle signs and wonders by the hand of the prophet Elisha as instructed by the Lord. Now, I know some of this just seems somewhat abstract and off the wall, but if you're looking for God to just be one way, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Our God a man manifests himself differently at different times to different people in different circumstances. So let's go and see how the Lord manifests himself this time in the word of God. Moving on to 2 Kings, the third chapter. In that third chapter, we see another working of God's hand. In that third chapter, the king of Israel Judah and Edom were going to battle against Moab. And along the way, they find themselves with no water. Amen. They find themselves in need of water and they're in this valley and there's no water. And Elijah instructs them, amen, to dig ditches in the valley. Uh huh. Strange thing, strange, strange, strange. But God knows how to do uh, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so God instructs them to dig ditches in the valley. And look at verse 17 of 2 Kings, the third chapter. He says, For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Do you see what just happened? There's no water anywhere. And God said, dig ditches. You're not going to see any wind. You ain't going to see no clouds. You're not going to see any rain showers. Not going to see no hurricane. You're not going to see anything. But God turned nature upside down. And cause the water to come from below and fill the ditches. Enough for the men and for their beasts and for their cattle. And everybody that was with them. Not only that, but God always does more than you ask him for. He says that I'm going to give the Moabites into your hand. God will not only feed your need, but he will supersede your need if you have the faith to believe. Oh, God, hallelujah. I've got to move on. I've got to finish this tonight. Amen. Next week won't be the same. I've got to finish this tonight. God can do anything. He can do anything. Hallelujah. What are your dry places tonight? What was alive but is now dead? What are you facing that appears to be loose, listless, and lifeless, as Bishop Leroy Jackson Woolard would say? What? What do you need God to do? Do you need him to touch your body? He can do that. Do you need him to restore your mind? He can do that. Do you need him to take some things out of your life? He can do that too. God can do anything. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not too late for you. I know a God that brings dead things back to life. Yes. Yes, God can do anything. You remember the woman at the well? Jesus said, but whosoever drinketh of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Hallelujah. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. God's got more than enough to meet your need. God's got more than enough to supply everything you need. Just trust him, believe him, and ask him. Elisha, 
Say, God's going to do it without rain and without wind. Turns nature upside down for the children that are going to war. Hallelujah. Sometimes, uh, Lord have mercy, God shows up when things get desperate. Uh, sometimes God shows up when it's too late. Uh, he, he can show up when it's too late because he can turn back time. Oh, my God. Let me move on. Second uh, Kings, the fourth chapter, Second Kings 4. We move into very familiar territory with Second Kings, the fourth chapter. We see the woman that was a widow in Second Kings 4. This, this widow woman, uh, she found herself with creditors that were demanding money from her. And as a widow, uh, she didn't have much money. So the creditors were threatening to enslave her two sons if she couldn't come up with the money to pay them. I don't know what bills you have. I don't know what's due and overdue, but God can do anything. The prophet Elijah says what you have in the house, what, what you got in the house, what do you have? What, what, what do you have that uh, God can work with? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, what do you have? Let me, let me just pause for a second. What do you have that God can work with? What do you have in your spirit, in your soul? What do you have in your life that God can work with? He can work with just about anything. What do you have that God can bless and multiply? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So he tells the widow woman what you got in the house. The widow woman says, I have one pot of oil left. That's all I got. And that's not enough to satisfy the debt. I've got one pot of oil left or the creditors are going to come and sell my sons into slavery to pay the debt. And so Elijah instructs the woman to go and find as many pots as you can. Borrow from as many neighbors as you can. Now, what I see here is God working a miracle in her faith. So if you only going to borrow two or three pots because you think that'll be enough, God says, I need you to supersede your expectation. Borrow as many as you can. Go to strangers and borrow. Go to your neighbors, your kinfolk. Go and borrow as many pots as you can. And Elijah instructs her to pour out of the one pot that she has into the many pots until she can pour no more. And so the widow woman does exactly what the man of God says. And she ends up with enough oil to sell and pay the creditors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah so that her sons won't have to be sold into slavery. God will work with what you have to make what you need. God is the only one I know of that can multiply the smallest and turn it into the greatest. He just needs our faith to be enacted that he's already given us. He said he's already given to every man the measure of faith. You have enough faith to make a difference in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God can do anything. Hallelujah. God has given us talents. God has given us skills. God has given us the anointing that destroys yokes. God has given you enough to make it good in this life. You don't have to apologize for being talented. You don't have to apologize to being blessed. You're blessed to be a blessing. God has given you enough and to spare. Hallelujah. You're blessed to be a blessing. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Come on, shout. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And then say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. God can do anything. What do you need him to do for you? He can do it. He can do it well. He can do it exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Wow, that was powerful to see how God manifests himself. Songwriter said he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. God can do anything but fail. Look at how he has manifested himself in the various ways 
demonstrating himself to be God of nature and God of humanity, God of everything, God of the heavens, God of the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven. He's God everywhere. And so let's trust him to be the God that can do anything. So on tomorrow, part number four, we'll see in chapter four how God does even further demonstrate that he can do anything. God bless you. Yeah, that's the kind of